Hard Player TV is here today with Antonio Esfandiari. How's it going? You said my last name very well, Lizzie. I'm, I'm very proud. People Thank you very never much. Say it. How do they say it? Uh, I, I mean, there's you so can't many butcher different variations. Yourself. I mean, yeah. But we have Antonio Esfandiari here, and a couple of years ago, he won a bracelet in Pot Limit Hold'em at the World Series of Poker. It feels like 13, 15 years ago, but it was a few years ago. I think it was three, four years ago. I think it was four years ago, 2004, right? I don't know. Yeah. My research says this, so. I don't even know what year we're in, so I couldn't tell you. So is Pot Limit Hold'em your best game? I think Pot Limit Hold'em is the ultimate skill game as far as No Limit and Pot Limit Hold'em goes. Um, I don't play it that often, so I don't want to say if it's my best game or not, but I wish that every event was Pot Limit Hold'em. With well, an ante somehow. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that event. Do you remember how it started off? Did you begin to build up your ch chip stack early on? Um, yeah, I remember a couple of key hands in the tournament. I beat up, uh, I actually sucked out on Phil Helmets at the final table really badly. It was, it was pretty sexy. I had pocket queens, mm -hmm. and I was short stack. I just doubled up, and I was first to go. So, of course, you know, two queens, I'm supposed to play that, right? Feels, feels I think right. so. Yeah. I've read that so, somewhere. So I go all in. And he wakes up with two kings, and he had two black kings, and I had two red queens, okay? I can see where this is going. And it came three clubs <laughs> on oh. the board, okay? And not to say, of course, I won that pot. <laughs> That's pretty sick. It came yeah. queen of clubs, and then it paired the board on the river. I mean, he was pretty sick. <laughs> That's pretty well, it was a pretty intimidating final table. You mentioned Phil was there. I know Chris Ferguson was also there. So you're telling me that Phil Helmuth is intimidating? Is that what you're trying to say? A little bit. Not so much? Not so much. Well, how do you change your strategy at a final table if you're playing against other pros as opposed to amateurs? Um, well, I mean, you just pros think differently than amateurs, and mm -hmm. it just depends on the pro and the situation. I mean, you know, pros are just relatively good players. Um, for the most part, you can actually get them to fold easier than amateurs, so I might be more likely to bluff a pro than an amateur. Well, at the final table where you won your bracelet, were you in control of the final table the entire time, or did no, you let other people do the knocking out? I was out? short stack. All right. And um, I just kept, like, holding on and weaseling my way up. Doubling up through helmets. Yeah, doubling up through, <laughs> sucking out on helmets. And then I uh, actually sucked out twice at the final table. I had pocket deuces against pocket eights. Ooh. And it came 9-10 uh, <laughs> jack, and I won that pot, too. <laughs> So, so this is how you win tournaments. You know, you just suck out. Things go your way. Yeah, exactly. It so was my time. Tell me about heads up play. How'd that go? Heads up play, um, I don't remember who had the chip chip lead, mm -hmm. but uh, I had it at one point, then I lost it at one point, and then we got it, you know, we eventually got it all in, and I ended up winning with a six and he had ace nine. So that was sick <laughs> out. <laughs> what do you think are the biggest differences between pot limit and no limit hold'em? Um, in no limit, you can just, like, go all in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Pot limit hold'em, I think there's more skill because there's more flop. And any game where there's more flop play, there's more bluffing, there's more thinking, there's more strategy. So for that reason, I like pot limit a lot better. Well, what skills are more important for a pot limit hold'em player? Uh, Post-flop play. Post-flop play. Yeah. I mean, no limit is just an all-in fest at some point in the tournament, and that's no fun. How do starting hand requirements change for pot limit hold'em? Well, I mean, it depends on the situation, of course, early, middle, late. Um, mm -hmm. Also, if there's no ante in pot limit hold'em, so my hand requirements go way up. Um, you know, whereas in no limit, I might play anything from from the back. Um, Polymer hold them. I, I I'm only going to get the small blind, the big blind, so I might fold a lot more hands. Yeah. So how do you decide how much you're going to bet in a pot limit game? Well, for the most part, you want to usually bet the pot. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, it just depends on the situation. What about preflop? Excuse me, preflop. Does that come into play that you should you don't want to play hands like small pocket pairs, small suited connectors because you can't make the big re-raise that you might make in no limit? Well, I would never play a small pocket pair and hoping to make the big re-raise before the flop. Uh, okay. That's not my style at all. I would always want to hit a set. Pocket fives is nothing to me until a five comes on the flop. So for that reason, Polymer Hold'em is great because if you, ra if you, you, you know, get in, in, someone raises, they can't shut you out. You can always, always see the flop. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, my last question. What advice would you give to a player if he came up to you before the first event of this year's World Series, which is the championship hot limit event, said, I've never played before, I'm a no limit Hold'em player, how can I win this tournament? Um, play good. Um, <laughs> just remember that um, in No Limit, you know, you can get shut out. In Pot Limit Hold'em, you can't get shut out. So if you have, like, a pair of fives, like we were talking about, instead of bringing it in for a raise, I think maybe just calling is good because if you raise, now he puts in the huge re-raise, you know, you, the pot starts adding up, then you might not be able to see the flop. But okay. in that spot, I would just call, and then if you get raised, you can always see the flop for a small raise. Right. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming by today, Antonio. Thank you for Antonio. having me, Lizzie. It's a pleasure. Lizzie Harrison with Antonio Esfandiari for Card Player TV.